All right, returning to assignment three. I'm going to shortcut to it by going to assignments. Scroll down to where we post assignment three. On Mondays, I always recommend you check your course outline. What we are working on today is actually finishing up the animation portion of this project. So creating all of our frames so that we can move them over to this site, giftmaker.me, so that we can set the timing for each frame. But let's remind ourselves of what that looks like. So three things are required for this project. It's due next class. One is our rough storyboard, nine panels that tell our transformation. A transformation is a change of state. So not just a movement test, so that I couldn't just go from this frame back to this frame, right? There's going to be consequences to it. So it has a beginning, a middle, and an end. Hello, hello. So I've already posted, posted my rough storyboard sketch. The next thing we post is the GIF animation, the online automatic playing animation that will play all of our frames, both our keyframes and any in-betweens. So the minimum number of frames you can have for your animation would be nine, right? But we often need a lot more. Okay, once we're done with our animation and we've posted it, then we're actually gonna take the nine best frames from our animation and make a refined storyboard. That's gonna be our first layout project, which is perfectly timed because that's right before we have to lay out the three projects we want to print for the midterm. So, so far, I just have this posted. So then I go to my files for assignment three. I have an assets file and I have a stage file. I open both of those up in Photopea because we're doing this all with freeware. As long as you have a computer that can run quite a bit of, of layers then this is an option. So now I'm going to open up my assets. I do that first, and then I say file open, and I open up, let's see, from my desktop, Let me find my folder, assignment three, my stage. So, they look identical. Assets, stage. The difference is my assets has a, uh, a guide right down the middle to show me the symmetry, and my stage doesn't. So that's one difference that's helpful. The main difference you'll see over in layers, that my assets have just a whole bunch of layers. These are all the components to build the frames I want, whereas my stage is just a clean, 100% opaque link of my finished layers. And I'm even going to just delete that background once. I don't need it. So this is what I've animated so far. Four frames. And I can play with the animation just by using toggling the eyeball. This is where I left off. You need to use something, yes, so that your assets aren't completely new. But it can be even just something that's in the background. But I want you, because it's our final compositing project, I want you to have something that is familiar that you are fitting to this purpose instead of only finding new stuff or drawing new stuff. So, in my assets folder, I have some of these components that I used as additional material to my exercise two emoji. So because I haven't worked on this since Wednesday, I need to figure out how I built this. So you build your assets through different layers. The next thing I need is to be able to see my storyboard. So you can just have it open in your sketchbook. I'm going to make it just small on screen in my preview here. So 
so that I can easily reference it. So the next thing that needs to happen is these hands need to come further down and the hat needs to come further down. So what I can do is I can make a copy of this layer. It's always good to have duplicates in your assets and then move that copy straight down. And I can move it straight by using the move tool and holding down shift and that will hold it in place. And I wanna go down that far. Okay, then I'm gonna turn off the other one. And now I need to find this asset and I need to duplicate it. And then I'm gonna use option command T to stretch it down, holding down shift. And then I'm also going to swell it in the middle by right clicking and warping it here. And here. Just so it looks like it encompasses the sides of my character's face. Now some of you get really, really obsessed with getting your GIFs to be clean like they were finished animation and you don't really need to do that because they all move by so quickly and they're going to be processed at only 256 colors online. But if I now go between my stage and my assets, I can see that this is the next step, right? So that frame seems right. So now this is the review. This is the, the really arduous aspect of animation. And that is the repetition. It's called the workflow of once you've set up your frame, how do you move your frame over to your stage to make it into your film strip? So I am going to not only say it, because I've said it a lot in the past videos, but like I did for my morning class with Photoshop, I am going to do all of this for you in Photo P because they're a little bit different. So I'm going to make a new note. I'm going to make it a different color. Let's make it blue. Very pretty. I'm going to move this over the top. And you can kind of see the differences in case you wanted to play with this in Photoshop. I know some of you are using Photoshop. So this is for Photo P, moving asset frames to the stage workflow. The first step is the same. We set up our desired frame with your asset file layers. Remember your assets is where you turn on and off layers, you organize, you duplicate, you add new things, you use free transform, you make the layers you want. I could even get rid of the monocle for this frame if I wanted to. Right. So that it goes right from, from this, where the monocle's already covered, to this. So we forget the monocle's even there. Okay. Next, everything's set up. Next, I select my topmost visible layer. And that is true as well for PhotoP. But there's an extra step here, which is hold down shift and click on last layer, or should we call it first layer, bottom layer, the one at the very bottom. This is uh, a select all layers procedure. Okay, so I'm going to hold down shift and click on the bottom layer. So hold down shift, scroll down, click on the bottom layer. You see how it selects all of them. Next, I'm going to hold down the option key and go to layer. And then we're actually going to click on Merge Layers. So let's see what that does. I lost my little sticky. I have a lot of stickies. All right. So hold down the option while clicking on Layer 
but instead of it being called merge visible in PhotoP, it's called merge layers. Now this is what's called a non-destructive merge. Because I held down option, you can see all of my asset layers are intact, but it gives me a combined layer at the top. That's very helpful. You, you won't really curse yourself if you accidentally flatten all your assets and then have to rebuild all of them. So, next step. Should all be the same as Photoshop. Command A to select it all. And you can do that also under select all. Command A. Next. Command C. Here, I'll shrink this a little bit. To copy it all. So first you select that merge layer. Then you copy it. You can also do that under Edit Copy. Then you click on your stage file. And then you hit Command V or Edit Paste to paste in your new frame. Voila. Okay, next, Command S to save your stage file. Because whenever you add a new frame, this has gotten a lot of students in trouble. They've built tons of assets, they build them over to their stage, they've done it like 20 times, but they've never saved their stage. And so then something happens and they lose all of those merged assets, right? So, Command S, I'm just going to build it into the workflow each time I add a new frame to my stage. Then I go back to my assets, click on the assets file. Then I'm going to do Command D, remember on a PC it would be Control D. And on a PC, it would be Alt, not Option. So I'll put Alt slash Option. <laughs> but Command, I can't say Command slash Control because Control on a Mac would not do it for you. Okay, now that I'm back on my Assets file, I have to hit Command D to deselect. And then I hit Delete to delete that merged layer. Because until I delete that merged layer, I can't see anything I do building a new asset. And then we start the whole process over. So now I need to set up my next desired frame. What's my next desired frame? It is that the hand goes up to reveal that there's been bites taken out of the mustache. Now to really get that to work, maybe I need to pull the hat all the way down, even though that's not shown in my sketch. Right? So this is where you're deciding on your in-betweens. And I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to duplicate those hands again. I'm going to move them, the duplicate, on down all the way so that they're covering up the mustache. And then I'm going to duplicate the body of the hat, right? Whoops, not Command-T, Option-Command-T to free transform. And then I'm going to I'm actually going to use Puppet Warp for this to remind you, especially for those doing character animation. If you really want to control your warping, you can go to Edit Puppet Warp. And then I'm going to lock these points here so none of this moves, because that wouldn't make any sense. And then I'm going to click on these points, Set Anchors, at the bottom, so that this does move. I'm going to stretch that down, and I'm going to stretch this down to fully cover that mustache. All right, so it goes from that to that, and that worked pretty well, except I'm going to give you a little bit of regular warp to, to straighten it out here. So Option-Command-T, warp. Yeah, Puppet Warp just made it a little, little loose. So what I'm going to do is actually straighten it or push it out too far on both sides. There we go. And then I'm going to use my good old lasso. I want it really clean, so how can I do this? I'm going to use my, I haven't really used the Ellipse Select tool. And I select a lip, an ellipse, and then move this. <coughs> Just trying to get something kind of clean. There we go. And then I'm going to delete with it as a stencil. 